All right, so this one we're going to look for uh, error bounds using Simpson's rule. Uh, for Simpson's rule, so suppose that the fourth derivative of f of x is less than or equal to k, where x is between a and b. If e sub s is the error involved in using Simpson's rule, then the error the e sub s is less than or the absolute value e sub s is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 times n to the fourth. So what we're going to use this uh, use this to do is we're going to figure we're going to solve for n. They're going to we're going to have problems where it says okay we want the error to be within this number say like 0 0.0001 okay well what does n need to be that's the examples that we're going to work uh, I've got three different examples each example is going to have its own video so go ahead and check those check them all out because they'll each be different functions and uh, different ways to find k k's k can be the toughest thing to find Okay, so check them out. All right, so let's take a look at example two. So it says, how large should we take n in order to guarantee that Simpson's rule approximation for the integral sine x dx from zero to pi is accurate to within point zero 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 one. All right, so remember For Simpson's rule, it's k times b minus a, which we just looked at all this, over 180 n to the fourth. All right. And we also know that the absolute value of the fourth derivative is less than or equal to k. So we need to know what a and b are and we need to know what k is in order to solve for n. Well, a and b, that's easy. That's 0 and pi. That's the limits on your integral. Now, k, that's a different story. Okay. Sometimes k can be difficult to find. Sometimes it can be easy to find. Okay. It just depends. But in order to get k, we need to know what the fourth derivative is. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So we've got f of x is equal to sine x. And so I need the fourth derivative. So f prime of x is equal to cosine x. The second derivative, well, derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then the third derivative, well, that would be what? Negative cosine and then the fourth derivative well the derivative of cosine is negative sine so the negative and negative would make it positive and so the fourth derivative is, ju is just sine x alright so we've got the fourth derivative of f of x is equal to sine x okay. and this is less than or equal to what value now remember remember x is between 0 and pi all right so I mean we can get, we, we can get a good idea what this is by graphing it but you should be able to get this without graphing but let's go ahead and, and sketch the graph of sine on negative one. So we know that sine looks something like that. Well, we're just we're just concerned from zero to pi, and we know the largest that sine will ever be is one. So we know that sine x is going to be less than or equal to 1. All right. 
So we will take k to equal 1. Because see, it's the absolute value of the fourth derivative is less than or equal to k. And we determine k to be 1. All right. So now we need to plug everything into here. k is 1, b is 2, a is 1. So let's look at this. So I've got, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said 1 and 2 on A and B. A is 0, B is pi. Okay. I've been doing a bunch of these today and the limits on some of them have been 1 and 2. I guess I've got that on my mind. Alright, so we've got B minus A to the 5th over... 180 n to the fourth. Okay, so now we want this to be less than or equal to the point 0, 0, 0, 1. So we've got point 0, 0, 0, 1. And now all we do, we solve for n. So the n comes up here, the point 0, 0, 0, 1 comes to the denominator. Well, this in the numerator, that's going to be pi to the fifth over 180 times 0 0.0001, less than or equal to n to the fourth. And so now I'll take the fourth root of both sides. That's pi to the fifth over 180 times 0 0.0001, less than or equal to n. So I get n is greater than or equal to the fourth root of this. So that comes out to be 11.4. And I will take n to be 12. Well, and then, I mean, yeah, it's 12. But you got to be careful with Simpson's rule. Because whatever you get here, just remember, you have to go up to the, to the even number. Because remember, with Simpson's rule, n must be even. In this case, we just went from 11.4 to 12. If you got something like 10 point something, you wouldn't go to 11, you would have to go to 12. Okay, so be careful with that. So I hope this video helped. Uh, check out the other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.